We're in the Ionic 6 this week. Wait for the beep to finish. That's a long one. We got the kids loaded up. We're going to swimming practice this morning. We're going to tell you all about this fully electric sedan. Let's pop the hood. We're going to get that long beep again, but let's get under the hood here and talk about the Ionic 6. We have a nice frunk and check this out. Shocks on each side to prop it up. Typically you see that in higher priced luxury vehicles. This is a limited and so the limited comes with the most equipment. There's an SE grade, SEL grade, and limited grade. You can get it in rear wheel drive or all wheel drive dual motor. This one has the dual motor. We have a frunk in here, a front trunk. It's pretty small. You can put the charger in here if you want. There's also a little light in here at nighttime so you can see what's going on. Not all that much space. So let's talk about the performance. Zero to 60 around five seconds, 320 horsepower with this dual motor around 225 horsepower with the rear wheel drive model. Range is important. On paper, this only gets around 270 miles of range. I've been getting 4.2 miles per kilowatt hour, which is over 300 miles of range with this dual motor all wheel drive. And my normal drives around town, picking the kids up, usually under 60 miles an hour. It's extremely efficient. Now, if you get the base model, the SE grade with the smaller 18 inch wheels, you can be getting like 360 miles of range on the rear wheel drive model. It's unbelievably efficient and smooth. So let's go ahead and get into the front. And that hood closed very satisfactory, very well fitting. This car is built extremely well. Uh, even on the base grade, you're able to get these really nice projector headlights. We got fully LED turn signals. If you want to come in close, you can see the nice amber lights. This doubles as your daytime or your, sorry, your turn signal, as well as a little bit of a daytime running light. And then you have your headlights there on top. Look at the small attention to detail. Ionic 6 logo sprinkled into the headlight capsule. Very, very nice. Of course, this limited has parking sensors. And with the sun coming out, this digital green starts to show its green nature. Most of the time, it just looks black and it gets dirty like a black car as well. Looking down here, these are the active shutters. These will close to allow for better aerodynamics when you're on the highway. And I can kind of move that. You can kind of see that. It's pretty cool. Now, I love Hyundai's flush logos here. Very smooth. It looks very premium. And we're starting to see this more and more in high luxury uh, vehicles like Lexus, for example, that makes their logos flush into the bumper or, or the hood. It looks super premium and nice here. Squares is gonna be a, a, a theme with this car as well as the Ionic 5. You see squares everywhere. We see it in the daytime running lights and the blinkers. You see squares on top too. They're all over. And here's the little front camera, which is only, I believe, only available here on the limited grade. Now, as we come to the side, we have the beautiful 20 inch wheels. Like I said, you can get 18 inch wheels on the base grade, which will give you much better efficiency and range. Now this limited gives you auto folding side mirrors as well. All of them come with these square LED turn signals here on the mirror too. I'll turn that on for you. Pretty cool if you ask me. Also you see this little square here, you can lock the doors that way. But if you approach the car and it's already locked, these handles pop out for you. It's pretty cool. There's also an old school key. So if the battery dies, you still have the, the, the old access key port there. All right, let's, let's talk about the side profile here because look at this slopey vehicle. Very smooth front, very long roof line that goes all the way to the trunk. You got this dual spoiler action here and this really comes alive at night. It's not gonna show up very well here, but this is your brake light here. And you see that theme of the squares again all the way through the back here. While the lights here are very horizontal, you have these additional, I think your reverse lights are down here. You have these additional vertical pieces that kind of break up the, the width of this. Ionic 6 right in here. Now this is a sedan, but it behaves in a lot of ways like a crossover because I press this button and the hatch lifts, which is pretty incredible. I have just a, you know, child seat in here taking the kids around the chargers in here as well so you have this rear trunk hidden storage to hide the charger if you don't want to keep it in front but check this out i press and close just like you would in a uh like a crossover it's pretty neat so let's take a peek at the kids in the back real quick oh charging all right charging again more squares here you press it opens 
some of the fastest charging. The kids are just fighting in there. It's fine. It's <laughs> no, completely normal. Um, but some of the fastest charging, look, it'll tell me roughly the charge of my battery here with these squares. About They're saying it's more than 50% right here. It's a rough estimate. There's around 55% left on the battery right now. But uh, yeah, I can charge on my level two at home. If you're DC fast charging, some of the fastest with the 800 volt architecture, 10 to 80% in only 18 minutes is incredibly quick. Now I'm gonna take this real quick. I love the armrest. This is a very premium interior. Now it looks really nice, but keep in mind, this is all hard touch recycled plastic. Look at this flat floor that a battery electric vehicle provides for you. So much leg room in here for not only kids, but for adults. USB-Cs, the vents are here, the Ionic 5, they're up here as well. So we just have center vents uh, here. But you can fit three kids in the black back if you need to. They don't have a super big roof, but at least we have this nice oversized roof here on this limited grade. <laughs> and they're still fighting. A look at the skid plate here, Ionic 6. It is textured and you have the little squares there as well. Now we'll cover most of this interior while we're driving. I just want to give you some ideas with the software. It is pretty intuitive to be honest. I love the base screen. It tells you your, your battery and your range, the time, the radio station. It has a little map here on the side. Like it gives me all that information, but I can also get into the EV tab here. It'll tell me the closest charging station. It tells me how much range I have with or without the climate control on. I can do vehicle to load in this car. I can change the scheduling too for when I want it to charge and how much it charges to. It is fantastic software, very convenient and intuitive. Um, it also has Android Auto. It is all, shh, girls, quiet. I have Android Auto. It is only wired. So the same thing with Apple CarPlay. It is only wired. As far as I know, you do not have wireless set up here so there you go it's pretty easy to get to however if you want to get back into the car software there are no quick buttons here into the touchscreen but you could press like media for example and it'll get you back into this screen as well but but let's start driving the ionic 6 where i'll talk a little bit more about this interior and the driving impressions it's a nice z06 there Getting out in front of traffic when you need to in the Ionic 6, it's an absolute breeze, silent, smooth. You don't realize how fast you're going sort of situation because it does it so impressively. The power delivery is fantastic here and the braking is also fantastic. One thing that does bother me when you go below 23 miles an hour is you have this synthetic noise that Hyundai puts into this vehicle and they do it with their hybrids too. But I mean, even our Prius has that synthetic noise. It's required from the government oh, because so they're people know. so people know. But the problem is, is that it's louder than any gasoline car. <laughs> so it kind of defeats the purpose. It. Yeah, I know Tesla is speaking Tesla. Um, Tesla's have synthetic noises, too, but they really dial back that volume and it's not obnoxious or annoying. Mm -hmm. So I wish there was like a, an over the air update here that Hyundai would allow us to put here. Oh, poor Abe. Oh, no. This is, his, Abe. this is his first um, electric car review, so maybe he, he wants to have the vibrations to soothe him oh, to sleep. Oh, <laughs> maybe. Oh, poor buddy. Poor guy. He has a sissy sitting next to him. All is well, right, Gigi girl? Um, this also handles noticeably better than the Ionic 5, at least in, in the feel. Oh. The center of gravity feels just a, a tad lower. It feels, well, the, the wheelbase isn't quite as long as the, the larger mm -hmm. Ionic 5 hatchback. Um, but it is a, li a little bit less roomy. Now, I feel like I have great visibility, but like, Cass, my head looks oh, really tall in here, right? Yeah, like, not a lot of headroom. I don't have hardly any headroom. Um, and this is, of course, with the, the roof. You can get this without this large roof with on lesser equipped models gotcha after the first time i got in here it hasn't bothered me but if you're taller than six foot one this might be an issue with your head height right and you can see out the window just fine even though you're yeah. a little bit tall visibility is great i feel like visibility is even better in here than it was in the prius actually quite oh. a bit better than the prius that we tested a few weeks ago yeah. the, the new generation Prius and visibility of the rear window here is much better than that Prius too. Just like there's thinner, I don't know, columns or whatever you call it, like, I'm not sure. The yeah. frame is thinner. Yeah. 
so funny. Yeah, th this this portion here, uh, my dad said the same thing. It is funny, and the reason is, in Korea and in Europe, they don't have side mirrors. They just have little cameras off the side, so you have these screens that ta oh. are are in this area. And so in North America, it just looks a little funny since this is just like a big hunk of plastic. Yeah. It just looks odd. It doesn't look ugly. It's no, just it's odd. just different. Mm -hmm. But I will say that this vent over here, mm -hmm. when it gets hot, mm -hmm. it doesn't do the best at cooling me down mm -hmm. because I wish it was up here where it has better access to oh. my face. So it's, it kind of has to go through the turn indicator, the steering wheel. It's mainly a hand cooler. And so you really rely on maybe these metal vents to cool the driver down. So that's kind of a miss. Mm. Also a miss is like when you hit the, uh, or you need to change the volume here, which you can do here, which mm -hmm. I, I now use this more times than not, because when you do it here, your knuckle will hit the climate control on accident. You oh, see that? And it, yes. it'll, it'll mess with it. And if it's completely off and you grab this, and look, your knuckle will touch the plus or the minus yeah. and automatically turns on the climate control which we do want on right now, by mm -hmm. the way. It's a little warm. It's a little warm. And you can see just with the mild temperatures outside right now, mm -hmm. having the climate control on doesn't really bite into our efficiency oh, and range. Oh, that's so neat. I love yeah, that. Yeah, so they have the little graphic there that tells us how much it, it, it affects our range, which in my testing, I haven't noticed any difference in efficiency. But okay, lead, leading vehicle driving away, they're really not driving away. They're just inching forward. But I love that feature here on Hyundais. Also, this has blind spot view monitor so ironically the other day like i tweaked my neck and i couldn't i couldn't really look to my blind spots in the car and oh, this puts up the blind spot here so i don't really have to turn my head that's such a neat <laughs> it's feature great. it was great you know i felt i i feel like it's a great thing for older people who don't have that neck mobility sure. and maybe can't always like look in their mirrors or in their blind spots as well as they need to they have that built in to, to this uh, center area, which That's is an amazing really safety neat. thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very little road noise in here, even with the larger optional 20 inch wheels. Um, and wind noise is pretty minimal. I believe I have acoustic glass here on this trim. Um, I can see the double pane when I roll down the window. So that really helps keep, keep the cabin nice and quiet. It's, and since the car is so quiet, you really notice that synthetic noise under 23 miles an hour. Mm. Um, if you have the radio on, you don't really notice it. Mm -hmm. So if you always have the radio on, you're not going to notice the annoying noise that I talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. Unlike any electric car, it has on-demand power and it's just incredible how smooth it is. <laughs> it's like a roller coaster, right? Mm -hmm. It's yeah. just, it feels like you're on rails. There's no engine noise. There's no vibration. Speaking of vibrations, what is NVH? Uh, no noise, vibration, harshness. I get a little bit through the steering wheel, a little bit of vibration here, but honestly, it's still, I feel like luxury levels mm -hmm. of refinement because of this electric powertrain. Mm -hmm. There is, um, you know, there is about 7,500 miles on this. So it's not right off the showroom floor or anything. Mm -hmm. The dead pedal down here is made of plastic. And you don't like and that? It, no, it doesn't, it makes a noise. Oh. So it feels like maybe the adhesive that kept it to the car is it wasn't good enough. And mm. so it's not going to pick it up on camera, uh, but it, it does make a creaky noise from yeah. time to time, which is silly. So I, I don't use the dead pedal as much. Um, this does have one, one pedal driving. I just got off the, the gas there and you felt it yes. kind of immediately give us this region. And so the car starts in level one um regen and i prefer to be in zero regen to be honest so level one's okay but zero regen it still gives you the regen when you get into the brakes unlike a tesla which doesn't have a blended regen brake pedal mm. so this is perfect if you don't if you just like coasting like me when you get off the gas pedal mm -hmm. and then the brake is your sole um decelerator in here other than like you know wind and tire resistance but it's really smooth and easy to drive this car. I feel like there's no learning curve once you get past the drive stock. Mm -hmm. um, you know, twist to go forward, or twist forward to go forward, twist backward to go backward, or to in reverse. It takes a little bit to get used to, but once you get used to it, it's, it's no big deal. Um, I do have access to the drive modes right here. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, I keep it in normal mode. Eco mode, 
you have to press the the quote unquote gas pedal too much to get anywhere and it's just not enjoyable and sport is just going to kill your efficiency and i still have access to all that power as we found out earlier when i was you know just easing onto the pedal you still have plenty of power in normal mode you press the button and there's just three modes here so it changes the graphics as well um there's eco mode and normal mode so i just keep it in normal mode plenty efficient and sporty at the same time if you need it what is it called blacked out oh murdered out the defender yeah the license plate kind of kills it they need to get like that miami heat yes. license plate that is that splash of like pink that's it's on like that pink and oh, blue i love it yeah but it's a blacked out plate and it looks nice. yes it's blacked out that's what they need to do it kills the vibe of that car oh it's interesting that the um the blind spot indicator doesn't let you know when there's like bikers or cyclists on the side i, I think it's it'll do motorcycles i don't think it'll do bicycles uh-huh. And we we go by those bicycles so, so fast, fast that, that it's, yeah, yeah, probably doesn't pick them up. But it'll do motorcycles? It does motorcycles. Oh, good. Yeah. Comfort. You know, Machir, there's a lot of plastic in here. Is this yeah. where I turn? Um, yes. You like to turn here. There's a lot of plastic in here. Um, and the, really the only aging of the plastic and the creakiness is the dead pedal. So it hasn't been an issue at all. Like in our Prius, it's mostly plastic as well. Now ours is much older, yeah. and, but there's plenty of creaks and rattles that have developed over the years on that car. Yes. So far, there there are none here other than the dead pedal from time to time. Um, but the seats are very comfortable. Mm-hmm. I do have heated and ventilated seats. The problem is you have to press this button to get into it, and that's going to take you out of your Android Auto if you're into it. Oh. So heated seat there. Um, and do I have to go to, okay. Yeah. And it's not a button for heated and ventilated seats. Look at this cast. There's like four or five different, or there's three different levels of ventilation and then three different levels of heat. Wow. It's really distracting while you're driving. I wish it was just a single button. I guess you could, you can't even slide it either. So oh, that's too bad. It's, I haven't yeah. actually used it at all because it's not that realistic for me to get into this menu to get out of the menus i I prefer to be in yeah um if it's cold out absolutely but yeah you have to set it before you leave essentially yeah because it's a pain in the butt to do this while you're driving driving, yeah so yeah just press that button to erase it to get me back into here this is a pretty straight road what is the i know autonomous driving like features Mm -hmm. here well the lane keep assist is really really good assuming uh you have radar cruise control on it still works pretty well if you don't have radar cruise control on but i only recommend it if you're super distracted while you're driving so (laughs) um i otherwise it it kind of pushes you around and you're always fighting with the steering wheel Mm -hmm. um there is no head-up display in here either which i believe there is on the ionic 5 and other models i didn't notice it until a few days after just having it. I'm like, oh, it would have been nice to have a head-up display in here mm-hmm. um, so I can see the speed on the glass instead of looking between the steering wheel. I do like the steering wheel quite a bit. It feels very roomy. I can place my hands wherever I want. It's really easy to increase the speed with just this plus button and minus switch at the same time. So, yeah, it's there. I feel like there's hardly any learning curve here with this vehicle it's very smooth the switches how they look aren't they really pleasant yeah they're nice yeah so scroll wheel for volume i like that yeah and then you have the scroll wheel for information here oh that is neat it's super convenient um for me to just look through my you know my Mm -hmm. efficiency and other information if you prefer to have you know, uh, driving assistant features show up on here, like mm-hmm. lane keep and radar cruise control. That will do that too. And tactically, it's nice because then you don't really have to like look down to find the button. No, right? You yeah. Just tactically, feel for the you, yeah. Exactly. The switches feel completely different than the the scroll wheels here. Mm-hmm. They have a, nice. a different texture. Something that also takes a little bit of getting used to going through like Duncan uh, <laughs> drive through this morning is that the window switches are not on the door. Oh. They're like the old Miata. They're centrally located. That <laughs> helps Miata. them reduce costs by not wa- having to wire the doors so much. Nice. But I still have wiring in here for the ambient lighting, 
which is a lot of fun in this car and it doesn't reflect off the windows or anything it's very peaceful oh, nice. um but i still have my memory seat wiring through here mm. uh, it's so, a nice door yeah. feels nice it's nice mm. resting mm -hmm. the bose sound system in here looks great the mm -hmm. speaker grill is super cool and and well detailed right while being minimum at the same time but it doesn't sound that great unfortunately oh. um it seems like they really tuned back the base in here because mm -hmm. once the base gets going you do hear the plastic in this car start rattling mm. so it's i could live without this bose sound system and there's lots of storage in here down here all this oh, is oh wow storage. that is yeah i, I thought that was solid that's so no, funny right it's great let's um there's a, a Hyundai next to us and that thing even at full tilt can't keep up with this at like half pedal. The design, you know, the style of this is why is one of the big reasons you get this car. Um, the interior design is another reason you get this car and the technology is fantastic. I mean, yeah. I can't, yes, there's some negatives in here, like the squeakiness of the dead pedal and this Panel, inconvenience of the inconvenience of getting into yeah, the heated climate. and ventilated seats stuff and the sound system's less than perfect oh i can go here but overall like i i've had a mazda cx50 this week too and i prefer to take this every single time i have the choice so it just depends on on what you like and i really like this car it's fun to drive it's relaxing to drive um it's eye-catching. It's eye-catching. Yeah, you stand out. You're not just another Tesla Model 3 on the road. No. I have to take true. my foot off the dead pedal because it's squeaking at me. But Oh, my goodness. You and your squeaks. It, but, um, no, I, I really like this car. And the deals you can get on them right now since they're sitting around quite long on dealer lots, the deals you can find on these are unreal. And it's an amazing car at any sort of discounted price. If you lease it as well, you get the $7,500 tax credit. Ionic 6 is a steal in my opinion in today's current market with them being discounted. It's just an amazing experience in here overall. Um, and the kids, they enjoy the kids it. kids are happy as heck back there and Abe, we eventually put him to sleep. Yeah, so eventually worked. He just wanted to keep moving. <laughs> so uh, thanks Hyundai for sending this to yeah. us and it's exciting to see where Hyundai goes because this is just their second electric uh, vehicle um, they have a three row coming which will Ooh. also be fun yeah. with the whole family to yes. test um, it's their kind of version of the Kia EV9 and I saw one this morning I'll put that little picture in there for you guys so excited to uh, see the Ionic 7 I think is what it's going to be called that three row electric vehicle that could be coming in 2024 by the end of this year so um, one last turn and acceleration here. Oh goodness. Not hard. <laughs> oh, it's just great. It's so relaxing, but we're going to end it there. Thank you again, Hyundai. And thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, make sure you subscribe. Oh, see, that was a collision warning. Whoa. That was a bit aggressive. That was really not very close to collision. <laughs> it wasn't close. Uh, but you know, if you're half asleep at the wheel or you're, you know, 85 there years you old go. and you buy this, maybe it's a feature you want. Look at this so. guy. He can't Look at this guy. Can he, he's not even staying in the lane. Those, those uh, Forte drivers, you know, can't trust them. Anyways, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Have a good day and peace.